Hello everyone. I uh, know I haven't done any videos for a while. It's uh, well, it's the uh, summer summer holidays, so I've got the kids uh, kids at home. So obviously there's not much time for flying, but I have been doing some building. So um, this actually was my T1 VTOL, <laughs> but uh, as you will see, um, I had a bit of a change of plan. I thought actually I'm just going to build another twin because um, I did the VTOL for a bit. Um, but I thought I'd just build a twin for a change. So I have 3D printed these um, nacelles, and this is printed in um, ABS um, GF, which is uh, ABS with glass fibre. And you can see it gives a really, if I just get this focused, will you focus? Probably not. Well, it gives a very nice um, finish on the print, and obviously it's quite quite strong, and it should be thermally resistant enough for these motors. I'm just using the standard motors from the um, from the VTOL, so if I just try and get that focused. Sorry, I'm trying to do this on my phone and it's pretty rubbish. Anyway, they are 1806 2000 kV motors. Uh, so other things have changed. Um, obviously I've, I've got my little hatch latch thing, which is something I designed a while ago, because um, I was finding that with the uh, the, st the stock latch for the uh, T1 I kept having. I, I lost so many of these, <laughs> so I designed this little screw fitting. And the way this works is um, it just screws, there's a, basically a screw through this plastic thumb, thumb screw, which is just an M2 screw in there. And then I've got this little 3D printed cover here just to make it a little bit more aerodynamic. And inside I've got this peg which goes down through, I get a bit of light there, basically the, the main wing spar goes through the bottom of this peg and um, that way when this screws down um, the hatch is held down by the spar so it's really not going to go anywhere. Up front I've got the um, Walks Down Moonlight VTX and to access the SD card slot I've just made this little hinge section there so the SD cards in there, and again, on the other side, we've got this one for accessing the bind button and the power. Um, I'm seeing the camera's just wedged in the front there. I've opened up these vents slightly, um, and obviously I've got cooling over the top here, and I've added in these little side vents on each side um, to create an exhaust, so there should be enough airflow going through underneath to... Hopefully, cool the bottom of that. If I just open up the rest inside here. So, for the antennas, because uh, obviously uh, <laughs> there's not a lot of room, and you probably noticed there was nothing sticking up on this, I've got uh, a fairly long side feed antenna, which I've just shoved back here actually, and it'll be interesting to see how well this works. I mean, this isn't going to be a hugely long range plane. Uh, but I think that should be sufficient there with the, with the side view because these are brilliant antennas and you know, there's not much in the way behind it that's going to cause any problems. So we'll see. And the other antenna, if we just follow on this side, uh, you've got the antenna wire there. And this is actually one of the Singularity long antennas from TrueRC. And you can just about make out that it's down right in there. And if I flip this over... It comes out the bottom, so we've got a nice low mounted antenna, and that is pretty clear of everything. So, I think between the two, we won't have any problems with um, getting a good video signal. Tucked right underneath there, um, get some light, is the Speedy B F405 Wing Mini, and I've just got an ELRS um, receiver with the antenna there. Again, it's not optimal really in terms of position. But I didn't want loads of things sticking out. One of the troubles with the T1 is there isn't really anywhere nice to put your antennas. You can't really put them on the wings because the wings are snap lock in. And I guess you could do some wiring perhaps with a connector and sharing a 5 volt feed from a servo wire. But actually it was easier just to shove it in there. And I think, it, yeah, it should be okay. We'll see. <laughs> and uh, I've just made this little battery tray. Um, I don't like having to have straps for batteries, so I've just made up a, f a f this is the 4S 1P, sorry, 3S 1P with um, Molycell P42A cells. 
so it's 4200 um, uh, ma so that just sits in there obviously plug it in and then when the cover's on it holds the battery down but this tray means the battery can't slide anywhere all I need to do is drop the battery in and it's always on CG because I've seen marked out where these screw holes are so when the battery's in there it, it's on CG so I can just make some more of these packs and know that you know it's slotted in and I don't have to worry about strapping it down and uh, it's not going to go anywhere because obviously that is being held in by the wing spar so um, even the weight of the battery pushing on that is not going to, to lift it. Uh, what else have I changed? Uh, not a lot on this one actually. Um, you see it did have the rear motor there so I've just covered up that hole there and I've got the GPS under here as well so it's a little um, Foxy GPS um, and that's it really. So I'm going to just charge up the battery and then go for a little flight. Um, the first flight in a while, so uh, we'll see how it goes. And uh, yeah, hopefully. <laughs> if this goes well, there'll be some nice flight footage at the end of the video. If not, there'll be some crash pictures. <laughs> Catch you later. Bye.